Hello there, welcome to my workshop. Today we're gonna to be building a simple software tool written in the Rust programming language utilizing the GTK UI framework. Now, if you've never programmed before, this won't be too hard to follow along with, but I recommend you reading some of my blog posts, which are linked below, that tell, talk about getting started from the very beginning from scratch with Rust programming. Now, if you don't know what GTK is or you've never heard of it, what it stands for is the GNOME Toolkit, and essentially it's a software library that provides all that you'll need to create user interfaces for computer applications. It's actually pretty simple to get started with, so what we're going to do is just go ahead and jump right into it. So what we're going to do to get started is simply open up a terminal and go to your desktop directory. From there, we're going to use the Cargo Package Manager to create a new project called UI Demo. Next, what we're going to do is move into that directory and we're going to edit the cargo.toml file. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell the Cargo Package Manager that we need to use some software libraries that are available from crates.io. And when you're writing a Rust application, the quick way to do that is to say the package name and then specify the package version that you want to use. When we bring in our GTK package, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're gonna specify the version, and then we're gonna specify the package name separate from the name we're going to use in our actual code. And the reason we're going to do this is that, let's say we had been writing in GTK4 this whole time. Well, when GTK5 comes around, what we can do is edit this package name and the package version, and then nothing, we won't have to change any of the imports or using statements in our code. We just update this one line. So we'll write that. And we're going to open up another terminal on our project directory, and we're going to build this application and let it pull in the software libraries we're going to use. And now this is about the time when you're going to go and refresh your cup of coffee because it's depending on how quick your computer is, this could take a minute. When this is building, if it errors out and doesn't build successfully, what could be the problem is that you may not have all the prerequisites installed. To make sure you have all the prerequisites installed, you might want to go on over to the gtk-rs.org website and look at the GTK4 book. And under installation, it'll give you all the instructions you need for whatever platform you're running on to install all the dependencies to build GTK4 apps. So now that that's done, we can actually start coding this thing. So we're going to come in here and we're going to edit the source main.rs file. And the first thing we're going to do is tell the compiler that we want to use those GTK libraries. Use GTK. And we're going to import the prelude class. Just import all of it. And then we're going to use GTK application. And then what we're going to do is come into our main function. We're going to create an app variable that uses this application class. And typically you would put new, but we're going to use something called the builder. And so within the builder, we're going to run the application ID, which we can put any ID we want. And then we're going to run the build. So that way it actually builds it out and returns that into the application variable. And just for some neat housekeeping, we're going to move each separate function call onto its own line. And we're going to come down here and we're going to run the app. And so if we build this and ran it right now, it wouldn't run properly. It would Get, kick out a warning and just shut right back down completely. In fact, let's show it happening. Run. Right, come on. 
And here you can see G library, G warning. Applications does not implement and activate. So there's, it's pretty much letting you know, hey, your app's doing nothing other than just saying, hey, I'm a GTK app. So what we're going to do is include application window into our call in. Um, we're going to build another function out called the build UI function, which will essentially build our user interface. And, oh, hey, Riff. So we're going to make another variable. This time will be our window. And similar with the application, we're going to use the application window builder. We're going to make the title something pretty. And now we need to connect the application it works with. So what we're going to do is make it pull in an app variable, which will be a pointer to an application class. And then we're going to build. And right down here, we're going to show the window. And so now what we need to do is connect up this window build UI function to our application's act activate event. So what we do is app.connect activate build UI. And now you'll notice that I didn't use the typical parentheses with function calls with the build UI and put our app variable in because with the connect activate function, what it does is it injects a reference pointer to itself into the function that you call. Now, if we write this, try to run it now, we should see something pop up. And here we have our small little demo UI, just this little window with nothing going on in it. So now let's add a widget into it to make it more functional. Now we're going to bring in a button class in here. I'm going to have a button variable. And it's just like everything else. We'll have a builder. We'll put the label as click me. And now we can add margin to it. For some reason, the GTK Rust bindings does not have an overall margin, but you can call out the top, bottom, start, and end separately. And now to link the two, we go into our window builder and we're going to put dot child and then put a reference to the button. You can see we now have this little button that doesn't do anything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hook some, hook the, some event up to the button. And what we're going to make is just a little coin toss. So we're going to create a new function. So this is where we're going to use that RAND crate from earlier. We're going to use the random function from that crate. So if random, and what calling that does, it will return either a true or false value. So if it's true, we want to print a line to our console saying heads. And else, if it's false, print a line saying tails. Now we need to connect that 
button clicked event to calling that function. Now, because we don't need to actually use the button in our function call, we're not going to make it a argument in our function. So one, what we have to do to be able to call the function without passing it as an argument is to move the ownership of the button variable into the connection event. And then we can call our function without any arguments. build and run. Now when we click it, we we'll see tails, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails. Yeah, it works. But whenever a user is going to be running their application, they're not going to have a command line open. So we're going to add a few more widgets onto this and make our coin flip change a label on the user interface. So Add in our label class, a box class, orientation. So just like with our button, we're going to have let label equals and we can actually pretty much copy this and paste it here. We'll have our labels start by saying Press flip coin to begin. And then we're going to change our button label to flip coin. Now, GTK works on the preface of boxes, which is basically stacks of widgets placed next to each other to make one child widget we can't just say this here the child op property of the window application window builder isn't going to accept an array of widgets or a collection of widgets it only takes one at a time so what we have to do is create a content widget which is a box class and here we are going to use the new function instead of a builder function and we'll specify the orientation vertical and zero padding between. Now we will append these widgets into our box. And then on the child property of the builder, put the box widget. So then when we build and run, if I didn't make any typos, you can now see we have two widgets in there. So now what we're going to do is make it so that when we press our button, it changes the label instead of just printing out to the console. So in our flip coin function, we're going to make a label argument, which is a pointer to a label class. And it will say label dot set text heads or tails. Here we have to put in a reference to our label widget. And something I forgot to mention earlier is that when we move the ownership of our button variable into the connect clicks event, we can no longer use that button variable after that lines, which is why I had to put it below the window builder where it had used the button previously. So again, now we will run it one last time. 
And you can see, there we go, it works. It's definitely referring heads this time. There we go, there was tails. Tails, yeah. So it definitely works the way we intended it. So there you go. That is building a simple application with the GTK and Rust toolkits. Um, there's definitely a lot you can do with these program, with these technologies, and it's something that I really want to get, delve deeper into. So if you like this sort of quick run through of making user interfaces with these, with the GTK toolkit, let me know because I'd really like to do more with this and kind of want to get more into packaging and how you'd be able to distribute this software to other people as well. So if you liked it, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment. Any sort of feedback is much appreciated. I hope you learned something. Have a good day.